Welcome to the 102nd episode at the Ask Dr. Khan Show. I'm Dr. Peter Khan, board certified chiropractic neurologist and functional medicine practitioner. Thank you for joining the show. On this uh, on that show, we give you information that will help you solve your health puzzle and help you get well and stay well. So this last week, I started a new series on fatigue. So I explained that fatigue is where you have low energy, you feel lethargic, and you rest, but you don't recover. You're tired all the time and you just can't snap out of it. And there are many different reasons for fatigue. You see, fatigue is a symptom. What's causing the fatigue? There may be diff many different reasons. So last week I talked about the first factor of fatigue, which is blood flow and oxygenation, right? So if you haven't caught that show, go back to last week's Ask Dr. Khan show and catch that. And uh, so we talked about blood flow, poor circulation, low blood pressure, and anemia as one cause of fatigue because all of those things relates to low oxygenation. So this week, we're gonna talk about the second factor of fatigue. So, and that factor is blood sugar, okay? So if you have too little low blood sugar or too much high blood sugar, both of those can contribute to fatigue. Now remember, last week I talked about fatigue is really a brain symptom, right? Because you experience fatigue in your brain. So this is where you need to understand the primary food source for the brain. So your brain requires two things to function properly. It requires fuel and activation. Fuel comes in the form of oxygen, which is what we talked about last week, and glucose. Glucose is a food source. When you eat carbohydrates and even proteins can eventually break down into glucose and this simple glucose in your blood is what's important for your brain because your brain's preferred, preferred fuel source is glucose. So what happens is if you have low oxygen states, like if you're anemic or you don't have uh, you know, proper blood flow to your brain, you can experience low fuel delivery to the brain and therefore experience fatigue. So this week's topic is on glucose. If you have low blood sugar delivery to your brain, or too little or too much, both can cause problems, that can cause fatigue. Now most people have no understanding of what glucose means, so I'm here to explain to you so you have a proper understanding of what that is. Because most people think like, okay, glucose is a fuel for the brain, so for me to have more energy for my brain, let me eat more sugar. Wrong. That's a very simplistic and, and a misunderstanding of what the function of glucose and how you get glucose into your brain. So let's talk about that, okay? What happens is when you eat food, let's say we have blood vessel here. Here's your blood vessel. And in your blood vessel, we have glucose. So you eat food, carbohydrates, uh, bread, pasta, sugar, sugar or cookies, you have glucose that's in your bloodstream, okay? When you have glucose in your bloodstream, what happens is your pancreas will make insulin. So I for insulin. Insulin will come in to your bloodstream, and what it will do, it'll get onto your receptor. So let's just say here's a cell, and we have receptor. The receptor is like a door, like a trap door. That control the flow of stuff going in and out of the cell. So here's a cell, and here's a receptor. Okay? And what happens is, when, when you have a lot of glucose in your blood, insulin will come. Let's use different colors for this stuff here, so we can color code this. Glucose comes, and your body will release insulin, and insulin will latch onto the receptor and what that does is going to send a signal into your cell, and through different glucose transporters, what happens is the cell membrane will open and be able to take this glucose into the cell. So insulin basically gets sugar out of your blood and into your cell. That's the primary function of insulin. Okay? Now what happens is when you eat a very sugary food, right? Uh, bagels, donuts, candy, Coca-Cola, sodas, 
or even just bread. If you eat something that's starchy or sugary, you release a bunch of glucose into your blood. You can have a whole bunch of sugar floating around in your blood. And the result is your body will have to compensate for the surge in blood sugar. Because you just dump your body full of sugar by making a whole bunch of insulin. So a whole bunch of insulin will come. Okay? When you have a whole bunch of insulin, what happens is the receptor, remember on the cell surface, you have this receptor. When you have a whole bunch of insulin, this receptor can actually start to shut down like this. So instead of being open, it might start to look like this. They downregulate. Okay? So when the receptor downregulate, you can no longer get the insulin in. It can't get in anymore. This is called insulin resistance. And insulin resistance will lead to inability of the insulin to trigger the cell to be able to take the glucose in. So what happens to sugar, the glucose, can no longer get into the cell, so it's just floating around in the blood. So you have a lot of sugar in the blood, and that's called hyperglycemia or diabetes. When people have diabetes, they have too much glucose in the blood. And this is caused by insulin resistance. Okay? Insulin resistance can be caused by dietary issues because you ate a bunch of carbs and sugars and sweets. However, insulin resistance can also be caused by inflammation. Inflammation can cause insulin resistance. As your body becomes inflamed, your body will release cortisol, which is a hormone that helps you deal with inflammation. And cortisol has the effect of raising blood sugar. As your blood sugar is being raised because of the effect of, of the hormone, your body will release more insulin to deal with that higher sugar from this inflammation response. And you'll become progressively more insulin resistant. So this is a case where somebody's eating a perfect diet. Man, I'm not eating anything bad. No sugar in my diet. But I still have belly fat. I still can't lose weight. So their weight gain or belly fat or high blood sugar is not caused by poor diet. It's caused by inflammation. It's really a hormonal issue because you're making too much stress hormone. See, it's not always the diet. If you're eating perfect, you say, I'm not eating any sugar, but I still can lose weight. I still feel, you know, problem, and I still have high blood sugar or diabetes. It may be inflammatory. So this is where you need to identify the root cause. And there's a lot of people who, you know, they, 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 str they try to eat better, and that's really good. But, you know, diet doesn't fix everything, right? Because if it did, you have these people who's eating really healthy and sti still have problems. And that's what I see in my practice. I have people coming to me who's already been everywhere, done everything, tried everything else. They went to all the medical specialists. Nothing's helping because Western medicine basically don't even fix the root cause. They just prescribe you a, a drug. And then you swing to the other side to see natural alternative medicine docs. And they're giving them a bunch of supplement without telling them really why they're having this problem. So they end up taking a whole bunch of supplement and nothing gets better until they come to see me. And we're able to dissect this and identify the root cause and people start to turn their health around. You can see 120 life-changing video testimonials at our website at AskDrKhan.com. Go see it for yourself. AskDrKhan.com. Okay? So another reason besides diet inflammation is chemical toxicity. There are many chemicals that are called endocrine disruptors. Endocrine disrupting chemicals. Or EDC. EDC stands for endocrine disrupting chemical. These are chemicals in the environment that straight up will cause insulin resistance. They can bind to insulin receptors. So you may have a chemical here. A chemical that can block the receptor so the insulin cannot get on the receptor because this chemical is taking its spot. It's displacing the insulin. So that can lead to insulin resistance. This is one of the most common reasons why so many people are insulin resistant. In fact, it's not really the diet, folks. It's not really that people are eating so much more sugar. Sure, it contributes to a certain percentage of people with diabetes. They're just eating so much sugar and they're just not eating healthy. But there's a whole lot more people that actually have insulin resistance and diabetes because of chemical toxicity. What kind of chemical does this? Your phthalate. Phthalate. It's pH. It's a weird word. P-H-T-H-A-L-A-T-E. 
It's a plastic plasticizer. It's a chemical added to plastic to make different degrees of you know, flexible, flexibility in plastics. Phthalate is a chemical that can block insulin receptor and cause insulin resistance. And in fact, some studies show that phthalates is so common in the population, it's like 70% of the U.S. population have, is finds phthalate in the urine. Another thing that can do this is your PCBs. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, BPA is what I'm trying to say. All these alphabet soup, right? Bisphenol A or BPA. Bisphenol A is a compound, again, it's used in plastic. And that's why now you're seeing more and more BPA-free bottles. Why do they want to make it BPA-free? Because BPA is a endocrine-disrupting chemical that can not only mess with your insulin, can also mess with your thyroid hormone, can mess with your reproductive hormone like estrogen and progesterone and cause hormone imbalance. So these chemicals are no joke, folks. I mean, majority of the population have these chemicals in the body because we're so exposed. And so one th on one hand, we must avoid exposure because the best way to detox is just not come in contact with them in the first place. So you have to learn to switch out these plastic products. So try not to put food in plastic containers. Try to put them in glass. Uh, you know, try to avoid using plastic cups, plastic com containers, like I said, plastic water bottles. So just doing simple things like that can really add up. Now these BPA and plastic is not only found in food, it's also found in food packaging. So a lot of time when you buy food, they come in a package or even buy fast food or you know, when you eat out, the, the paper that's kind of holding the food, the food wrappers can have plastic lining inside of it that can spill into the food. Uh, as well as um, you know, just, just avoiding these things in the first place, okay? Because it, it's very difficult to detox these things if you're constantly building up. So you have to avoid exposure at all costs at, in, the, in the first place. And then the other side is you avoid exposure and the other side you must detox it. So there's various different ways to detox these chemicals. Uh, sauna actually helps. So anything that makes you sweat. So sauna can help detox some of these chemicals. Uh, but really avoiding it really helps. We also use uh, different homeopathic remedies. That's what we do in our office. We specifically test for these things and we have specific ways that we use to detox these chemicals out of the system. So these chemicals can definitely cause insulin resistance as well, okay? So we're talking about fatigue. And fatigue ended up in the chemicals. So you see, different people have different root cause for their fatigue. You may have fatigue because you have oxygenation issue, like we talked about last week. You may have fatigue because you have blood sugar issue, and that blood sugar issue may be caused by insulin resistance, and the insulin resistance may be caused by poor diet, inflammation, or chemical toxicity. See, we must identify the root cause so you know what track you're supposed to be on and what's the intervention for that specific problem. When you go to a conventional medical doctor, this is never talked about. Like, when do they talk to you about your diet? Almost never. When do they talk about chemical toxicity? Never, because in Western medicine, they only consider a toxin that's a problem as a toxin that's gonna kill you. But they don't look at toxins that accumulate gradually over 30, 40 years that cause disease slowly over 30, 40 years to be a problem. In fact, there's really no drug intervention for these. There's no drug they can give you to detox these chemicals. So it's really up to you to learn this and work with a doctor that can help you. Okay? And that's why I have clients all over the country that I work with. We do Skype video consultations with them. I order lab work to measure these chemicals, to measure if they have metabolic syndrome. And we go over the lab work through you know, video conference. We share the computer screen. You can see exactly what your test results are, and I talk you through it. And based on the test result, I give you a specific eating plan to address dietary issue. I give you specific supplements to address these metabolic imbalance, like inflammation and hormone imbalance. And we do specific things to detox these chemicals out of your body. And we teach you lifestyle strategies so that you can actually learn how to take care of yourself and your family. That's the key differentiator, okay, where we teach you how to do this stuff, okay? So that's really important. I believe that body can heal itself. I believe that God made our body to be self-regulating and self-healing. You just got to do the right things and get out of the way, so to speak, and let the body, this grand design made by God, let, let God do his job. 
get out of the way, get rid of the toxins, get rid of the poor foods, your body can heal. But you got to work with somebody that can guide you through that because we're not trained and taught in school to do this. And medical doctors are not trained and taught to do that in a conventional HMO, PPO model. They just don't do that. That's not even, they don't cover that. It's not even in the frame of mind to even do that. It's up to you folks to protect you and your family and to get well. Okay, you can do it. We can help you with that. Okay, I want to send uh, some shout outs here. Hi Velma, thank you for watching. We have Lisa, Lisa Cordano, Cordano, Cardano. Uh, Michelle, thank you for watching. Rita Rebel, thank you so much for joining the show. Suzanne Foss, good to see you. Thank you for having you on the show. We have a question from Cindy Ramirez. Do we test for thyroid hormone? Absolutely. <laughs> thyroid is uh, how I got into this game. I mean, 90% of my clients are thyroid and Hashimoto cases. That's what I do all day, Cindy Ramirez. So if you have a question on thyroid, definitely you found the right place. Give us a call at 480-988-6269 to learn how to get started. Or you can private message us on Facebook as well. Velia, do we see kids? Absolutely. We take care of kids. In fact, again, that's how I got into this work in the first place because my kids, my own children, have food sensitivity and severe food allergies. And uh, that's why I got into looking at food initially to help identify food sensitivity and allergies in my own kids. And uh, so that's why you know, I started doing it with our clients as well. And it's been a, an amazing journey since uh, we've been doing this for a long time. I've been practicing in Arizona since 2006. So we've been in the same location for uh, 12 years now. All right, thank you, Scott Barling, for watching. And Josie, thank you for joining us. So now let's talk about the effect of glucose on energy level because the, the show is about fatigue. So when you have too little blood sugar, what will cause too little blood sugar? You might be saying, because I'm not eating enough sugar? No, actually the reason why you have too little blood sugar could be due to either adrenal issues, adrenal fatigue. Adrenal fatigue can cause low blood sugar because the effect of adrenal gland, especially with cortisol, this is a hormone made by the adrenal gland, is that it raises blood sugar. So if you have adrenal fatigue, that means your gland can no longer produce enough cortisol, and therefore your blood sugar cannot be raised. And that's why some people will have low blood sugar due to adrenal fatigue, and it's really common. And usually, these people with adrenal fatigue not only will have low blood sugar, they'll also have low blood pressure, like I talked about last week with the oxygen issue. Okay, so we'll see this type of pattern. Now, the question is, it's not good enough to just say adrenal fatigue. You must ask, why is adrenal fatigue? <laughs> What's causing it, right? Because there's a lot of people who are told, oh, you have adrenal fatigue, take adrenal supplement. I don't use adrenal supplements that much because I'm more interested in what's causing the adrenal to be fatigued. Many times it's due to a viral infection. Many times due to chronic chemical toxicity, wearing the system down. Many times due to you know, uh, autoimmune, so you're chronically inflamed and your body's just attacking your own tissue. Many times due to just chronic stress. Whatever the reason is, you must identify that reason and address that. Otherwise, you'll be taking an adrenal supplement for the rest of your life and your adrenal gland is still fatigued. Okay? So low blood sugar, which can cause fatigue, can be caused by adrenal gland issue. Low blood sugar sometimes can be caused by what's called reactive hypoglycemia. Reactive hypoglycemia means your blood sugar is a roller coaster, okay? Because what happens, remember what I said earlier, when you eat something sugary, your blood sugar level goes way up, and what happens, your body compensates for that by dumping out a bunch of insulin, and all this insulin in the blood drives the sugar way down, and you can get low blood sugar from that. So it's like a roller coaster. Just like, you know, Halloween, you, you know, kids get a, you know, trick-or-treat and get a bunch of candy. They eat that, those candy, and the blood sugar go way up, they get super hyper, and then like half hour to hour later, they crash and get like super cranky and tired. That's what happens when you have reactive hypoglycemia. So some people will have reactive hypoglycemia where they feel lightheaded, shaky, irritable. They just feel tired because their blood sugar dips after that huge rise in the beginning. So these people still have diabetes. In fact, you can have diabetes where on average your blood sugar is high, but you have periods where the blood sugar drop. So these people will show high blood sugar patterns, but still have low blood sugar episodes. That's because of reactive hypoglycemia. So that could be a reason for that as well, okay? Either case, if you have low blood sugar, you can't get glucose to your brain, you're not gonna function well. Typically, symptom of low blood sugar is, like I said earlier, 
lightheaded, shaky, irritable, right? If you don't eat, if you skip meal, you wait too long. Or another symptom is that you eat, your fatigue lifts, you feel better, your energy comes back. Man, I'm just getting really tired, I eat, and now I perked up. If your energy level fluctuates because you ate, you probably have low blood sugar issues. Then that's where we address the root cause by identifying if it's an adrenal issue. If it is an adrenal issue, is it a viral? Is it a chemical toxin? Is it some kind of chronic stressor to the body? And we gotta look at reactive hypoglycemia. Now on the other spectrum of this is high blood sugar. So remember, low blood sugar, right, can obviously cause brain fatigue because low blood, glucose is one of the primary fuel source for the brain. What about high blood sugar? You might say, well, if low blood sugar can cause brain issue, that makes sense to me. Why will high blood sugar cause brain fatigue? Well, remember, when you have high blood sugar, what that means is you have a bunch of glucose in the blood, and that drives your pancreas to make a bunch of insulin to try to deal with all the sugar. And what that leads to is insulin resistance, where the insulin don't work anymore. When the insulin doesn't work anymore, you have a bunch of glucose floating around in the blood, high blood sugar, diabetes, but none of this glucose can get into the cell. So your cells are literally starving for energy, like no sugar inside the cell. So it's like a paradoxical pattern where you have a lot of sugar in the blood, but not very much sugar inside the cell because it can't get in. In that case, the cells are starving of uh, uh, glucose, just like in people with low blood sugar, except you have high blood sugar, in the sugar, high sugar in the blood, but low sugar in the cell. You have su you're suffering with low energy delivery into your brain cell when you have high blood, when you have high glucose because of insulin resistance. So that's why people with diabetes don't do very well. Now, what is the symptom, symptom of high blood sugar? Number one symptom is you fatigue after you eat. Okay, so if you eat a big meal, like after lunch, you just like, you just like pass out. You have a after lunch coma, right? Or you have a carb coma, especially if you eat like pasta or a carbohydrate rich meal, you just are gonna pass out. Because what happens is, when you have a lot of glucose in your blood, what happens is this glucose is converted into fat, right? Because when you have all the sugar and you don't burn the sugar, guess what? It gets stored. That's why people with diabetes type two get overweight. You become obese, you gain weight, and you can't lose it. And it's all centripetal weight gain around the midsection. So what happens is the glucose gets converted to fat when you don't burn it. So when you eat a high starchy meal, it converts into fat, not only you gain weight, but the process of turning glucose into fat takes a lot of energy. It takes tremendous amount of energy to convert this and store it into fat. So that's why it saps your brain of energy because you're converting things. So when you're falling asleep after a meal, just know you're getting fatter, literally, because of a chemical, biochemical process, okay? Fatigue after meal. After you eat, you get tired. It's a symptom of insulin resistance. That means you're becoming more and more diabetic. Not good. We need to fix that, okay? Uh, another symptom of insulin resistance is that you gain weight in the midsection. It's hard for you to lose weight. Also, another symptom of insulin resistance is that you will get sweet cravings, especially after you eat. So this is where, you know, you go to a restaurant, you order a big old meal, you eat that whole thing, and then after you eat, you're still craving for, they bring you dessert menu, you still order everything on the dessert menu, you can't turn down the sweets. You got insulin resistance. Because what happens is you eat this meal and you're, 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 you're insulin resistant. You can't process all the sugar. So what happens is your body says, oh my gosh, I have all the sugar in blood, but no sugar inside my cell. So your cell is still starving of energy, even though you just ate this huge meal. So it sends you a signal to say, hey, I have no food inside my cell because all blood can go in. So it give you the sweet craving to get you to go eat something sugary to jam more sugar into your cell so you can kind of perk up a little bit. That's what you're doing. And that, that, that act of the sweet craving and you succumbing to the sweet craving by eating something sweet causes more insulin resistance. It becomes a vicious cycle. That's how people get so overweight, so diabetic, such high blood pressure, and it break, the insulin resistance breaks all the other hormones. It breaks thyroid hormone. It breaks adrenal hormone. It breaks your sex hormones. It just caused such inflammatory state that can become very difficult to break. But you can't break it. You just gotta need the right help. You need dietary, you need to balance your body chemistry, and we do that with specific targeted supplement based on your lab test. We also need to detox. Remember endocrine disrupting chemicals, this BPA and phthalates 
can cause insulin resistance as well. So it's got to be a holistic thing, you see? can't be just one thing. Just changing your diet may not be enough. We may need to do more, okay? So high blood sugar definitely can cause fatigue because literally you're starving your cells of energy by having so much sugar in the blood but nothing's getting in due to this insulin resistance blocking it at the cellular level. And uh, remember, these other factors that can cause insulin resistance as well, okay? So that's it. This is the second factor of fatigue, which is blood sugar. Both high and low blood sugar states can cause fatigue. So you must make sure your blood sugar is stabilized. And we teach our clients how to do that. We can help you as well. Again, we consult with clients all over the country and globally through Skype video consultations. It's been working out beautifully for our clients. Please call 480-988-6269 to schedule a case review. Or you can private message us on Facebook if you're out of the country so that we can reply to your messages and uh, help you get started. So next week, tune in to next week where we're going to talk about the number three factor of fatigue. And uh, if this video has been helpful for you, you're enjoying it, you're learning a lot, something new for you, please help me share this video with someone that you know can benefit from this information because together we can help a lot of people. Please like and follow my Facebook page if you're, not, if you're not already doing that so that you get notification when we have new content coming out. And again, please share this video. You can also follow me on YouTube, on my YouTube channel at PeterConDC. You can also follow me on Instagram. What's our Instagram handle? Ask Dr. Khan. Ask Dr. Khan at Gmail or just Ask Dr. Khan. And then also uh, on our website, AskDrKhan.com, we have over 120 video testimonials as well as all previous shows are archived at the blog at AskDrKhan.com. So there's many ways for you to you know, get free information, but nothing's going to change the transformation you experience when working with someone that can guide you, that has the experience, that look at you holistically and won't say that it's all in your head, that you're crazy. That's going to actually help you. So I look forward to seeing you next week at the Ask Dr. Khan Show. Take care. Yeah.